Some opening comments from Coach. Uh, well, it was a uh, an interesting week to say the least, and I think we can put all that to bed and put it to rest. But I'm just really proud of the kids the way that they came back and prepared and didn't miss a beat. Thought we played well on offense, defense, special teams overall. Uh, you know, the defense 14 nothing. They get a nice drive together, have a broken play for the touchdown, and they get a pick and right back out onto the field. And they boat up in that fit situation. I was proud of them, uh, but it was good. It was uh, ran the ball very very well. There's some really good tailbacks, and let's not forget who's in front of them: the offensive line, the tight ends, um, the wide receivers, and those fullbacks. Uh, talk about unselfishness. They just keep on working at it, and uh, some talented players back there make some big time plays for us. I also think Joel checked the run game very well and checked the center some out of some things. And again, that goes unnoticed many times, but that was that was a positive. So special teams, we kicked the ball uh, pretty good overall, seemed to, and made a few plays. So the kickoff coverage I think got better as the game went on. And as we kicked the ball better, the kickoff coverage got better. So uh, it's proud of this group of kids. Great, great crowd today. Uh, exciting for myself, you know, selfishly to be involved in, in a Big Ten game for the first time. It's, it's something special out there, as, as you all know, but uh, I've never had that opportunity until today. So that's a memory I'll cherish for a long time. Got microphones on each side. Jeff. You're carried through this point in the season. I think you're pretty comfortable that you can run the ball effectively. But there were some pass plays today, that, especially a couple of free throws that you guys missed. Are you going to need to start converting more of those consistently as from the here on? I would say yes. Um, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me as far as third down and the throwing and the running, all the stuff that comes with it. But if I just say one thing that we come out of that game that we need to do, again, we need to pitch it and catch it better. And I don't care if it's a long throw, a short throw. Um, there were some drops out there again today. Um, we need, to, we need to get rid of. So uh, we protected well. It seems like we are protected very, very good. I've seen Purdue. I've watched a lot of tape on them. I've seen them give some people some real problems with rushing the passer. And for the most part, we protected extremely well. So we need to throw the ball and catch the ball better without, without a doubt. Yes. You've been a part of a number of teams over your career, but can you recall being around a better running back tandem than James and Melvin had to offer right now? No, 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 no. They're, uh, they're very, very talented, and especially with the, the way they fit in the type of offense. You know, we had a few years ago, a couple of years ago, we had two NFL backs that were playing for us, and uh, obviously I believe we have two NFL backs playing for us now. But just they're so dynamic, their ability to make people miss, and they really kind of complement each other with their running styles, in my opinion. So um, they're, they're special kids. <coughs> the third guy jogging out there on the field is not too bad either. <laughs> You alluded to the defensive stand that led to that field goal instead of a touchdown. What did you see from Southward where he came up and forced Hunt to lose two yards and go out of bounds? And it was second goal from the five, and he had gained five yards on first down. And it looked like Hunt was going to get outside, and he did. Um, you know what? I don't know. I would be speaking. I, I probably I couldn't even tell you what the defensive call was in that situation. And uh, it was on their sideline, I suppose. On the five. I, I didn't. Well, it was, your side. It was on our sideline. Yeah. I must have been, uh, must be getting a drink of water. So I can't remember that play. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you. I know something I don't. Gary, it seems it seems like a chicken and egg thing. Uh, good coverage in, in, in the back end versus a pass rush. What was the equation today? What got the secondary? Was it the secondary that got the pass rush uh, un moving in the right direction or the other way around? Well, you know, I think we were um, we got more push today <laughs> overall. I we, we had a few more pressures that came clean early. Forced him to escape, but I just the kids rushed the passer better today and had some opportunities to make some plays, and, and they made them. Um, you know, we mixed a good amount of zone coverages, and we didn't blitz a lot. And there was a lot of uh, you know, four-man pressures that may look like blitzes, but they weren't. So it was, it was a good defensive effort, and I think we just rushed the passer better today than we have in some other games. Gary, you had so many explosive plays, and that was such a big part of your offense last year at Utah State, too. How important is that to what you're doing right now? Oh, it's huge. You know, it, Chunk yardage on offense. It's it's hard in today's day and age of college football to you know, go 12 plays and 80 yards and a pile of dust consistently. You've got to have yards and chunks, and we've been able to do that when we've been successful on offense. When we've kind of stubbed our toe and, and haven't been as effective, it, it's uh, we don't see those chunk yardages coming our way. And um, it's it's great to have. It's talented young men that can do that. Uh, there's a lot of good football players out there, and we need to keep having that happen. Uh, and I think the defense is doing a pretty good job of not allowing a lot of you know, big chunk yardage plays. Uh, 
how did you want your players to react today? Did you want them to play mad? Did you want them to forget about last week? And what was their mindset? No, you know, I don't, I don't want them to forget. Um, I don't think you ever forget a loss. You, know, you learn from it to whatever you have to do to try to learn from it. Um, I've always thought that as a coach, and I always thought that uh, it needs to be communicated to the players. Uh, did I want them to be mad? Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. And uh, I think they should be, uh, that should carry them for a long, long time. That should give them a little chip on their shoulder that uh, um, hopefully it carries them as we continue forward. And, we talked about that this morning, and you know, I was, uh, still am, and I hope I can keep that edge a little bit more for them. And we talked about it when we left there at Arizona State. This should push us to be a little bit harder, and, and we should want to uh, practice a little harder, work a little harder, play a little harder, uh, prepare a little harder. And you know, apparently, they did a nice job of that this week. Jack, sure. you mentioned getting better hits on the kickoffs when you guys made the change. Was that? Your call, Jeff's call, and did you guys know what to expect from the new kid? Or? Yeah, well, <laughs> Endicott has done a good job in practice. He really has. Um, he, he's had some opportunities. Um, we just felt like, I, I, I believe that we're going to be in a, in a better spot when you have a guy kicking the ball off and a guy kicking the field goals. Um, it hasn't been that way so far this year, but right now we're, we're hitting the ball well in field goals. and. He just seems clean and consistent, and his extra points are good. Uh, the holes are good, and the kickoffs were, you know, pretty adequate. I think we got him up in the air, even though going to the wind. We still got him up in the air, pretty good, and, and he pounded a couple of them out of the backside. So uh, it's a tough moment because I promise you, when he went to bed last night, he had no thought of kicking the ball off in a Big Ten game, um, and neither did I. For him to have had to do that, he wasn't with us at the hotel, or, but he had the opportunity to come in and play. So. Here we go. Proud of him. Henry, as you alluded to, their one touchdown was off a broken play. It appeared like you may have had it defensed properly. Did you see it? Did you, were you going to make the play? Had they actually run the play that you thought they were going to? Well, I know it was a fly sweep or a power. It was one of basically the two. So they were kind of running the fly and then the handoff, the same same play that you know, we run a lot of times out of that. And um, I, I really have no idea. I just saw it kind of open up on the backside. We were in a quarters coverage and we ran across the field. and. Uh, we had to get cut off somewhere on the backside. I don't know who got cut off or where it was, but um, somebody in the, in the structure of the defense had to get cut off, and the kids saw the hole and, and ran it for a touchdown. Tom, what did you think of Vince Beagle? It seemed like he got some good pass rush, but might have lost contain on the edge a couple times. Yeah, Vince, this will be a great learning tool for Vince because he hasn't had a lot of opportunities. BK's taking all his reps, and I'm sure there's some, some good and bad in there, but I know this, he played extremely hard. Um, I didn't see a lot of blown assignments from him at all, and he was, again, ready for that moment, and that's a credit to himself and the coaches. And he came up to me before the game and said, Coach, I'm ready to go, and um, didn't look starry-eyed and, and was in the moment. So he, he did a, a, my belief right now before I watched the film is he did a nice job. Jeff, it seemed like your players dealt with a number of injuries this week and today as well. At this point, you have much concern about severity that those injuries were yep. time. I, I do. Um, I didn't even talk to the trainers before coming in here. Um, so we'll see. But there's some big shots that we took. Hopefully these kids get back. I don't think anything seems to be a huge problem. But there's some issues out there. And we'll know a lot more tomorrow uh, early in the first of the week. Because obviously we need everybody we can get for this, week, this next game. Back. Gary, with the uh, friendly running back competition, is it easier or harder for you to kind of pick and choose who goes in or what or what plays to run for each running back, and, or is it a friendly competition? Well, well, first of all, that's not me at all. Um, trust me, Thomas Hammock and Andy Ludwig can do a tremendous job of controlling the running backs and get their reps and build the plays for them and, and let them. Those, those are two great coaches, and, and they'll get them in the game when they need to be in the game. Um, but I, there's some different touches. There's some different feel that you do for what they do the best, and again, Thomas and Andy have a, a good feel of that, and those two kids are very, very unselfish, and they're, they're fired up for each other when things go uh, well, and when things aren't going so good, they, they uh, look at each other to, to get it fixed, and it's a, it's a very it's a friendly competition, and trust me, it is a competition. Jesse? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, that's okay. Hey, Gary, uh, do you like where the Ohio State game falls in the schedule? Uh, you've got kind of a veteran team. They're dealing with the quarterback injury situation. Uh, you better get them early than late, do you think? Um, I have no idea. You know, I, it uh, just comes when it comes. And 
I don't know what a quarterback issue is or the scenario. The other guy, what do you six touchdowns in the first half or something? So they, they seem to be firing all cylinders pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fine where it is. Um, either way, it wouldn't matter to me when we play them. Coach, you touched on it a little bit uh, in your opening statement. How did you feel uh, before the game, and uh, how how important was it for you guys to get out to this uh, one and all starting weekend? Well, it was it was big. It was, it, a little antsy um, before the game for myself again because I just uh, you know, what would have gone on in the past, which is now in the past, and uh, it was just it was just an exciting time to be able to go out and play again. Um, they were they were money now. They came down. They were nails as far as being focused, and they got themselves uh, in and out of the hotel this morning and, and were prepared. So I was a piece of myself, and I think I'm always you know, as a coach you know, look at them and try to make sure they're okay. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. But they were, they were ready to go, and uh, they make me feel good about this team when you, when you walk on the field. You mentioned earlier about the uh, pitching and catching and need to improve in the pass game. Um, more specifically with Joel, it seemed like he had some tough moments. What was your analysis of his play? Well, yeah, I thought he threw the ball sideways real good as far as the bubble screens and the underneath passes. Uh, a lot of those, the outbreaking routes, I thought he handled them very, very well. Um, it seems to be the in-breaking routes right now that is an issue. Just in a nutshell, and we missed the one slant. Um, had a couple of those. We missed the, the, the long one. I couldn't tell what happened on the long ball. It's like it was up there forever, and Jared just couldn't quite get his sights on it. But again, we we got young men that care. No one cares more about throwing the ball good than Joel. I promise you. Um, he'll work on it. He'll continue to work on it. He is making some very nice throws at times. Uh, we're missing on a few. Uh, that, uh, they're not necessarily layups. It's not that easy to just go out there and throw the ball 60 yards down the field and have it get caught. But uh, we'll work on it. We'll be better. Uh, he's got good coaches helping him get down, uh, you know, getting the scheme in a good position for him. What have you seen on Borland leadership-wise in the last few games? Since I've walked in here, I've seen great leadership. Uh, I felt like I watched last summer. I felt like I saw him go through two summers ago. Now I guess I, I saw him lead a team that I was getting ready to come in and try to play, and it's done nothing but grow on me. He, he loves the game of football. Uh, right now, he leads our team in community service hours. Uh, he's a senior. He doesn't have to do that stuff. He does it because he goes with Wisconsin. He loves football. He's a leader. And our young kids learn so much from that kid. It's, uh, it's amazing. So, tremendous, tremendous leader. Jim, Gary, one minute to stop. Did you tell what happened on the interception? Um, was he no. expecting Wozniak to... Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think it was. Uh, I just heard a little bit over on the phones, and I think it was a zone coverage to a man covered read. And um, I'll have to look at that one. I'll have to get the information on there. But there was, a, I think, there was a little bit of a miscue. Jeff, I think when we talked to him Thursday, you were hopeful Landis would play, but I guess he did not at all. What did you know? He wasn't really available. And just first inclination, I think O'Neill did filling in for him tonight. First of all, he he could have played. He could have played. If we felt like we needed him, but we just did not um, get into that position, and I felt very good about O'Neill going in there. He's done nothing but play well. It's just nice to have a third guy that you can kind of roll through there. And Landis was ready if needed, but O'Neill was consistent. Um, proud of that, you know. For him, Ethan came in and moved in and played inside last week, and you know, don't think that. He goes home and O'Neal's all jumping up and down and excited because Ethan came in and played inside linebacker. Now he got a shot again this week, and I thought he played well. Can it, Gary, how much did Purdue as a parent lack of a running game factor into your desire to want to, to rush the passers, to upgrade the pass rush the play? Well, the, the down and distance were basically when we felt uh, the pass rush. Uh, so I think it was just dictated strictly by where they are, where they're sitting, and how things are going forward. For us, as far as building defense around the down distances, um, nothing really about the run game. Uh, we were stout against the run uh, and got us in positions to be able to you know, rush the passer by what down distance was happening. Got time for two more. Coach, it seems with the first four games, teams, all offenses at least, made up a really big point of attacking guys on the outside edge. What have you thought about your contain, especially the play on the edges by some of the cornerbacks to get off the blocks? Yeah, I, we've been pretty solid now. Uh, fly sweeps. People trying to get the ball at the edges. I thought we'd see more bubble screens today. We took a lot of that stuff away from them. And the young, the young secondary has uh, tackled pretty well. Now, as soon as I say that, my mind goes right back to the one the soldier missed there in the fourth quarter. Um, that was a bad missed tackle, but 
I think they've been physical. Uh, they've wanted to tackle, which is a good sign. And uh, I think we're snapping off blocks. And our defensive pursuit appears to be very good again this week. And that's uh, a lot of kids that care out there run the ball well. And uh, missed tackles don't really kill you all the time if you can have people running the football. And I think that's what's happened on the edges a lot. Do you feel any better going into a road game at Ohio State coming off of a tough road environment last week, at least having gone through that? Yeah, I do. I think it'll be uh, exciting and it'll be a good situation to walk into. Uh, I haven't been there since I went on the recruiting trip back in 1986, so that was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't know it's all changed since I was there. Um, excited about uh, you know, going in there. It's, uh, Will be a great stadium, but the fact that we have gone on the road once and traveled is big for us. And I know it's a, it's a tough place to play and what have you, but our kids will be prepared. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, Thank you.